Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Today on Sue's Healthy Minutes, it's time for yet another It's the Bread Story. My guest today is Jennifer Bradshaw. Jennifer emailed me a couple of weeks ago to share her story. She began by saying how much freshly milled flour had helped her family and that the change had been incredible in a very short time. Then she began her story by saying, yes, it's a poop story. But as I read her email, I realized it is so much more than that. So I reached out to her and of course she was willing to share her story. So Jennifer, welcome today to Sue's Healthy Minutes. Thank you so much for joining me. And why don't you just begin by telling everyone a little bit about yourself and your family and where you're from. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So I live in North Florida um, with my husband and my five children. And um, my husband is a pastor of a local church here. And my kids have a broad age range. My oldest is 23 and my youngest is almost 18 months. Wow. And he was the one that Yes, it's his poop story that got us going on the journey. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, you said that you came to hear about Bread Beckers because your one-year-old, I guess he was one at the time, yes. was suffering from recurring constipation. So tell us a little bit about that. What was going on? Yeah, so when he turned one, we did all the normal things like transitioning him to table food and getting him on a sippy cup and all those things. And his little tummy was just really struggling. Um You know, you don't think of pooping as being kind of (laughs) all encompassing, but it became such a source of stress Um, for me personally, just because he was struggling so hard to poop. And of course, he was so unhappy and sad. We were going to the doctor and the doctor said, um, put him on laxatives. And we were doing suppositories. We were doing everything we could to try to help this poor baby poop. And it wasn't just that he wasn't pooping. You said he wasn't sleeping well. He wasn't eating well because he was uncomfortable. He was in pain. Right. So we definitely saw a correlation there where when um, when he was constipated, you know, he just he was uncomfortable most, you know, all the time. And he right. was sleeping well and he um, his appetite was affected. Um, so all the things. And so we brought it to our church and we started praying about it. And there were two wonderful ladies at our church and they, um, they, they were like, we're going to make you some bread. (laughs) And I was like, (laughs) okay. So they said, yes, we are going to bring you some bread and pancakes. They're making him pancakes too. Oh my, that's great. And we want you to feed him as much as he will eat and stop giving him the laxatives. Um, and I really had no idea what to expect at that point. I was willing to try anything. Um, So, I mean, it's bread. We love bread. So I put some butter on that bread and he ate it up. And within a day or two, of course, we had a fantastic poop. And, (laughs) (laughs) and, um, and, you know, it's so funny, but I am. I'm like messaging my family and messaging my friends saying, oh, my gosh, he pooped. (laughs) It's funny the things we get excited about, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) But when the baby's sad, everybody's sad. Exactly. Um, Oh, my goodness. So I was like, oh, my goodness, this is magic bread. Um, <laughs> I love and, it. And so they they told me about, they told me, Sue, about your channel, and they told me about bread beckers, and they told me about fresh milled wheat, and I was like, oh, my goodness, like, I do a lot of baking, and um, I consider myself moderately crunchy, but I had never heard of fresh milled wheat. And it's so funny. Um, so when I was initially talking about bringing fresh milled wheat into our house and maybe doing it ourselves, my, one of my daughters was like, where are we going to put the mill? You know? <laughs> <laughs> was she thinking big barn or something huge? That, yeah. 
we're gonna have to get some cattle to yeah are you taking over my bedroom with this or (laughs) right right so i i was convinced almost immediately once i saw the effect of the bread and the pancakes on my one-year-old and how as i continued to feed him this bread and pancakes um like his constipation just really started to resolve itself. Yeah. Uh, and so this was the end of 2023 that all this happened. And I mean, we're a bigger family. Um, and at this point, nobody else was eating the baby's special bread. You know, that was just for him. And the ladies at church were continuing to make it for him um, as I kind of tried to decide if I wanted to start milling myself. Because it was a bit of an investment to yeah. um, buy a mill, especially since we weren't really planning for um, purchasing something like that. But after seeing his dramatic improvements with his digestive system, we decided to go ahead, scraped our money together, and we bought a mill. And this was the end. This was just the end of January, twenty twenty four. That's amazing. Yes. So, so February, March. So really, it's only been two months. Yeah. Yeah. It happened really quick. I mean, and, and he really just started eating bread probably around Christmas time, like in December at some point. Um, that's when his constipation really was just kind of coming to a head. And I was so frustrated that it wasn't resolving itself. So you mean like he was eating regular store-bought bread or, um, so it was about Christmas time, December that my friends started making. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and they were sending bread from church with my husband <laughs> to me at home. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so it started resolving then. Yeah, it was really quick. It was pretty quick. Wow. Um, so I was a believer. We did some research. I watched some of your videos. Of course, I talked to my friends, and they they were all in, and they really were so encouraging and supportive. So we bought the mill and got the grains and... um. And I have to say, just in the couple months that the rest of the family has been eating it too, you know, my 18-year-old has noticed um, a difference with her digestive system and her hormones, like, and our anxiety. It's just, it's really crazy. We call it the magic bread. It really... (laughs) I call it the ripple effect too. You make this change and the next thing you know, you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. You also mentioned though about your, your baby... Something else about him. Did he have autistic tendencies? Yes. Yes. So um, I have a son that's on the spectrum and he's okay. 21 and already the one-year-old was starting to display some concerning symptoms that he might also be on the spectrum. So, and some of those things are like not making good eye contact, not wanting to interact um, with people, not like kind of smiling and laughing, not like sharing uh, relationships. Right. That. So, so the baby was already kind of showing some symptoms of that, which was concerning to me. And I did some reading about how vitamin E um, can really help children that are on the spectrum. And of course the bread is loaded with vitamin E. It's so good for you. So I noticed just in those couple months that some of those symptoms that he was displaying have almost completely gone away. Um, So I'm like, is it magic? Is it my imagination? Mm, Wow. No, it doesn't. It doesn't sound like it's your imagination at all. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I am really excited. I mean, he has another appointment coming up and I am so excited to tell the doctor constipation is no longer a problem, you know, and these symptoms that we were seeing, they have gone away. I'm really curious to see what the doctor's going to say. <laughs> well, I'd love to hear that too. I would love to hear it because it, it saddens me when doctors just say, here's a laxative and don't, don't tell people. It's even worse when they tell people there's nothing you can do about it. So here's some medicine. I'm like, yeah, there is. And it's bread and it's delicious. Oh, my goodness. Such a silly, easy fix. Yeah. A a delicious one at that. Yeah. 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 It's not like buying some uh, psyllium husk or some liquid and trying to get it in their food some way. Just like, here, have a roll with butter. Yeah. (laughs) How bad is that? So your 18-year-old, you said, was kind of showing some chronic anxiety and now she's she's excited about the bread 
She is. She tells her friends about it. Um, she's noticed like her hormones and that sort of thing is kind of leveling out. Um, even like her skin improving. And of course, all those things are connected. But um, and she has some friends where we're like, OK, I'm just going to make them some muffins, you know. <laughs> yep sneak it into them because they you know they're not fully on board with um milling at home yet so I'm like well maybe I can you know just take them some muffins without them noticing and then they'll be like wow I feel amazing why do I feel amazing well, it's like oh it's those muffins I I brought you yeah I mean that's <laughs> the way it started with you that's the way it started with me I was making bread for people and just sharing it because I like to and the next thing I knew they were calling me going, wow, I feel so much better. Or uh, one lady, she had two very hyperactive children. And she said, I brought home 10 dinner rolls from church Sunday. And I feel great. I'm able to keep up with them. I'm not feeding it to them. But I mean, it was, but similar, you know, and just like you, they some sweet ladies made you bread and look, look what it's led to. So that's amazing. And then you said your 16 year old had some GI issues, too. Is that are you seeing improvement there? Yes, we have definitely. Yeah. So, and that was another motivating factor too, where um, he's had chronic tummy issues, which does run in our family. Um, and so he's had all these tests and they don't know <laughs> what's wrong. Yeah. And, um, so the next thing they wanted to do was they wanted to do a GI scope. And I was just super hesitant. It felt so invasive and so, um, and like going to a specialist, a pediatric GI specialist is quite expensive. Yeah. And so that was another motivating factor for me to invest in the mill and invest in the grain. And that's what I said to my husband. I was like, all right, let's just give it a year. Let's yeah. Let's give it a year and see if we see any improvements. Um, because, I mean, the cost of the mill is like a doctor's appointment. Right. Let's just try it and see what happens. And he has had, um, he was having um, energy issues like fatigue and... Your husband was or... No, the 16. The 16 year old. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So he still has some issues, but it is so much better. And it, but it's only been two months, not it's even a, not a year. Months, right. <laughs> Oh, oh, man, that is just so exciting. Well, and you even mentioned that your little one-year-old had a little wart on his knee. Is that going away? Yes. Isn't that so funny? Whenever I told my friends that he had a wart on his knee, they just started busting out laughing. They're like, oh, another wart. So... <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny and, you know and that's I hear that all the time people will say well I really got the mill or started making the bread because of sinus issues or this issue or GI issues or constipation or whatever and I looked down after a couple of months and my wart was gone yeah yeah that's just so funny so I'm like even a wart story but um this is so exciting to hear all of this and and just you know you sound a lot like me I I when I learned about milling, you said you were crunchy. I was eating healthy. I was feeding my family healthy food, but I had no idea about milling your own bread. And you know, I was going to health food stores and buying my food and no and when I learned about it, I'd go in and I would like, Do you sell wheat? And they were like, No. I mean they they were clueless too. Yeah. So it was really funny. But I already cooked and I did make bread. I would buy store bought whole wheat flour. Of course I had to mix it with white flour to make a decent loaf of bread and can't tell you how excited I was when I milled flour for the first time and made bread without any white flour. And I'm like, this is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't a hard transition for me either. Um, but I know for some people, they're busy and, and they don't cook and bake like maybe you and I do. And you have five children, you're a pastor's wife, so I'm sure you're very busy. Is there, I mean, anything you can share that would encourage others who are considering taking this jump like you did into flour milling and making bread? Yeah, Um. so if there's chronic health issues in the family, it is, it is worth it. It is worth it. Yeah. And it's really not as much work as I think it sounds like it might be. I actually took a video. So there's a friend of mine, I'm really encouraging her to consider getting a mill. And I took a video and I timed how long it took me to get my bread and bread ready in my bread machine. I do have a bread machine that I yeah. 
and she's a workhorse. Um, and I timed myself and it took seven minutes for yep. to get everything ground up, everything put in the bread machine and for me to push start. Seven minutes. That, that's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's what I tell people. I encourage people get the tools you need to yeah. make you do it. If it's, if it's going to be, you know, very cumbersome or it's gonna you know like some people think well maybe i'll just start with a hand mill i'm like it's gonna take you an hour to grind seven cups of flour you know get the tools you need and i love what you said it was the price of one doctor visit yeah so how much money is it going to save you in the long run and discomfort and pain and agony for your baby i mean you can't hardly put a price tag on it can you and all the other things that we weren't expecting. Like I was not expecting, you know, my 18 year old to have such great results. And now she's telling all her friends, you yeah. know. And that's amazing I, when a teenager makes the connection, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Well, and so she leaves for college this fall, um, her and her brother. And already I'm like, okay, I've got to think of a way how to get them bred at college. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, are they going far away? Yeah, they are. Wow. Yeah. And and it's funny. They'll come home and go, I need bread. Yes. <laughs> I try to ship it, I think. <laughs> oh, man. That's so amazing. Golly, thank you. I just want to thank you. I just think that your story was so amazing. Like I said, so much more than a poop story. When I read, like you, I was just like, oh, my goodness. Look at all that it helped in just two months. Think yeah. what it's going to be like in, in a year from now. I just, I know it's going to be amazing. So, um, you know, if there's anything else you would like to share, I know we would love to hear it. Any final words of encouragement you would like to leave our listeners with today, go for it. Just, just give it to them. <laughs> so I would say it is worth the investment. Um, it is worth the investment for the health of the family. Um, and, it is not as hard or time consuming as people think. You just work it into your life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I've done. I am super, super busy. And I've just found a way to work it in. And really, of all of our health endeavors, getting my children to eat bread is definitely the easiest. <laughs> yes, yes. It, that, <laughs> yeah. that was the way it was for me, too. There were, there were things I would do for my health or whatever, for energy or whatever. And they would look at me and like, yeah, no, we're not. No, we're not drinking that. We're not eating that. But the bread, it was like, sure. I mean, I didn't even tell them it was healthy. Just yeah. put it on the table and they loved it. Right, right. So, yeah, I would tell, I would say people just try it. Like I said, just give it a year. Just yeah. give it a year. And if you don't notice any difference, then you don't have to keep doing it. But I'm <laughs> sure people will. I'm sure they'll see a difference. Yes, I, I know. For you, two months. I mean, wow, that's amazing. So I just, I thank you so much for taking the time to share. I know you're busy. When I read Five Children, Pastor's Wife, um, I'm like, yeah, she's busy. Um, but you know, I just, I know that your words, uh, your story is going to encourage so many people. And before we go, there are a couple of things that I would like to say to each of you listening. I want to first encourage you to share your bread with others. Jennifer's already sharing bread with another family, but a sweet lady at her church who heard of her baby's health issues, made bread for this family. And look at all the fruit that has come from her willingness to share bread and pancakes with someone in need. How hard can that be? And I say it's kind of like sharing Jesus with others. It can bring life and healing in ways that we could never, ever imagine. I also want to say this to everyone listening. I want to thank you for emailing me and commenting on our website and on our YouTube and on our podcast channel to tell me how much adding real bread to your daily eating has changed your life or the health of your family. When Jennifer commented in her email, she said, I'm sure you get testimonials all the time. I do, but I never get tired of hearing them. And I just want everyone listening today to know that God uses each and every one of your stories to encourage me and to confirm to me without a doubt that this is his perfect provision for life and for health. So I want to encourage you, keep those It's the Bread stories coming and your comments coming. 
You never know. You just may find yourself as a guest like Jennifer on Sue's Healthy Minutes or at the very least having me share your comments and keep sharing your bread with others. I know God will use your stories and your bread to encourage someone somewhere in the right moment of time. So as always, thank you for listening today. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minute. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Beckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.